So in Texas, we have Campus Carry, and as we've reported, students and faculty have expressed a greater sense of safety knowing that a licensed concealed carrier can take their firearm with them on campus because, as we've learned, things can go bad, and more good guys with guns have been proven to be an excellent way to balance those scales. But that's not going to stop anti-gun advocates who are determined to make sure that good people are disarmed in the face of evil. A trio of professors at the University of Texas, Austin, I'm sure you're still surprised, filed a lawsuit in 2016 to challenge campus carry, but their suit was dismissed. And now the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has rejected the attempt to revive the lawsuit. Do you want to know why? Because people in Texas want campus carry, and that's what we've called for, and that's what we got. These professors absurdly claim that campus carry would violate an individual's free speech, due process, and equal protection by having a, quote, substantial chilling effect on the classroom, end quote. So they're saying that the mere existence of the possibility that some good person might be lawfully armed is the same thing as intimidation which is a vulgar and horrible interpretation of that word and legal precedent. This is, it's preposterous. There's only one type of person that a concealed carrier intimidates, and that's the kind of person that would otherwise walk onto campus unopposed with intent to kill. Let's not forget that beyond these three professors, there are scores of others who, far from feeling intimidated, feel safer. Watch Amy Ivey, a teacher from Texas Tech University, and the decision that Judge Leslie H. of Southwick dismissed these, uh, the concerns of these professors. Watch this. This is, this is this professor at Texas Tech. I believe it makes the campus um, a safer place to live, learn, and educate. I like to think we're no longer a target of opportunity for any such event, such as active shooter, just because they know that if they come onto campus, there could be a potential for an individual to be able to stop the active shooting. We actually do a hands-on part where we barricade doors. We show you how to go to hands-on with weapons, how to defend yourself. And then um, we also do a tourniquet training where we go in and how to stop the bleed. So that way all of our faculty, staff, and students are prepare, prepared if an event does happen here on campus. Ivy actually works with law enforcement there at Texas Tech, which they allow campus carry, and they have said that it's working great. Now, Judge Leslie H., she dismissed the concerns of those professors. She wrote, quote, the professors cannot manufacture self-standing self by self-censoring her speech based on what she alleges to be a reasonable probability that concealed carry license holders will intimidate professors and students in the classroom, end quote. By the way, how are you, how are you suggesting that they're going to intimidate? By brandishing? Because that's, that's you're going to get cited for brandishing. And, and intimidation with a firearm is a crime. So what are you proposing that these individuals are going to do? I mean, the mere possibility of something you don't even know, that's not, that's not the definition of intimidation. Ken Paxton, the attorney general for the state of Texas, said of the decision, quote, the right to keep and bear arms is guaranteed for all Americans, including college students. And the Fifth Circuit's decision prevents that right from being stripped away by three individuals who the law enacted by the legislature, end quote. Now, I like the idea of college students, law-abiding college students, being able to protect themselves when away at school. I mean, either we're treating these individuals as though they're adults or we're not. And that's the narrative that anti-gun advocates need to pick. Do you believe that these are children, helpless children at, college, at colleges, at universities all over the country? Or do you believe that they're actually adults, many of whom live on their own, pay their own bills, make their own decisions, etc.? You can't have it both ways. And to strip to strip constitutional rights from people without any due process whatsoever? Well, the only other place that we're seeing that happen right now is Venezuela. And maybe perhaps you can tell me how those people feel so much safer that the government made those decisions for them.